So now when I look back on, on our years in government uh, at the turn of the century, when I look back at the, those last uh, seven years, I'm very proud of the, of the social progress that we were able to make as uh, new Democrats. We were tackling climate change with real strategies, real resources, real targets. We engaged in province-wide consultations on climate change. We introduced a green strategy with over 100 separate actions. And then we built the Saskatchewan Energy and Climate Change Plan. And both the strategy and the plan were, were formulated much with the guidance of our very good friend, Peter Preble. And we put money behind the plan. We took 100 million from general revenue funded from the Crown. And then we added to that 100 million, $320 million from the sale, a dedicated fund, from the sale of the province's interest in the co-op upgrader in Regina. It seemed to me we were moving from old energy to new energy. And you know that SAS party government, it, it only took them, I think it, I don't think it took them three months to take that $320 million dedicated fund to the, to the climate change strategy and reduce it to about $30 million. And, uh, and they took almost the rest of it all into general revenues for them to spend and who knows where it went. Maybe it went into a bypass at Regina, I don't know. We, uh, we initiated wind-generated electricity in our last term. I remember the day that, uh, that Frank Quinnell and I stood on a hill in southwest Saskatchewan uh, to, to unveil the, the location of the very first wind farm. I remember the man, the elderly man who had owned that land for years, and he told me, he said to me, uh, Premier, you know, I came to this place in the 20s, and then in the 30s in the Depression, I had to leave, and I because the, you know, the water ran out, it was a drought. And so I had to leave and I went to Ontario to the nickel mines and then I worked in the mines and what do you know, the nickel ran out and I had to return home. I said, but you know about this wind? This wind is never, ever gonna run out, ever. The wisdom of that man. So we, we initiated, we initiated the wind generated electricity. I remember that day, uh, I'm telling too many stories, but I remember that day we, after we made the announcement, we went into Swift Current uh, for a for a, a luncheon function, and and you know they they wanted me, being the big time premier, to be sitting up on a, <clears throat> a table with the mayor and others, and I, I said no, I think this time I I kind of like to just sit with some of these uh, young young power engineers, young young people who are engineers in power corporation, and just have lunch with them. And so when I got to the table, I, I said to these younger engineers, because you got to know there were, there were a few senior members of power who weren't all very keen about this wind-generated electricity. Anyway, I, uh, I said to these young people at the, at the table, um, now look, look, I, I've got a question, and, and there's no career-limiting answers here. Say what you believe. And I, I just said, what does it take for us to get more of this wind-generated electricity in the province? And their answer was very simple. They, they just said to me, um, uh, look, 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 Premier, all it takes is for you to tell us to do it. Well, that's all I needed to know about that subject. And, uh, and we went into a major expansion of, uh, of wind farms across the province. And to the credit of the current government, they have continued to expand uh, our, our wind capacity. And we could be doing a little more. I think we could be doing a great deal more in solar. But nevertheless, uh, the, the program has continued. So I'm, I'm proud of what we were doing in climate change. I'm, I'm equally proud of what we were what we're doing in these days in working with our First Nations and Métis peoples, uh, uh, attempting to, I think, build reconciliation before the word was uh, part of our vocabulary. We, we did major work on treaty land entitlements, major work in each education with the First Nations University and Gabriel Dumont and uh, SIIT. Um, we initiated the treaty education in our K to 12 system. And we, we broke down the jurisdictional divide. So we were doing roads, provincially funded roads on reserve. And we were putting provincial tax dollars into SIIT. And we had the very, very successful Aboriginal uh, employment development program. And then with, with Paul Martin, as our prime minister, we played a, I think fair to say a very key role in building the Kelowna Accord and getting the 
adoption of the accord with every province in Canada and the national government. And I believe had that accord, if Stephen Harper had not ripped up that accord, I think it would have made a very significant difference uh, to the First Nations, Inuit, and Métis peoples of Canada. We were involved in a great deal of, uh, of uh, low income and public housing initiatives. We I mean, spent $200 million, million. We had what I, what I call a host of people friendly initiatives. We, we, we implemented a universal seniors drug plan, the most significant benefit to seniors in a generation. We had a, we had a gold plan uh, for seniors, the gold plan, which, which included uh, medical transportation on STC and a 30% discount for seniors on every trip. That's when we, you know, that's when we had uh, an STC. Um, and, you know, part of that gold plan, we restored the fishing licenses uh, for the seniors. Now, I'd been accused of seeing my own future coming. And uh, that's why we had the free fishing license for the old guys. With work that had been done by Graham Adley, we, um, one of the proudest things that we did, what I'm, one of the things I'm proudest of that we did was something called Project Hope. And that was a, a major, major initiative in addictions uh, treatment and uh, education and uh, prevention. Uh, it didn't take them long to uh, dismantle uh, Project Hope once the SP got into power. Uh, we funded uh, Station 20, some will remember. 20th um, until the, the, the SP uh, stole the funding back from Station 20. When David Forbes is our Minister of Labor, we had a minimum wage plan that would have had the minimum wage reaching the low income cutoff by 2010 and thereafter indexed to inflation. And I can just tell you this. If we'd have been, if we'd have been, uh, we'd have been government over these last number of years, I'll tell you, we wouldn't have the disgrace of the lowest minimum wage in Canada. It wouldn't be so. When we were government and the auto fund uh, had an excess, we initiated SGI rebates. But here's the difference: we also went out and lowered the rates. We we put in place a mechanism to guarantee to the people of Saskatchewan they would have the lowest bundle of utility costs anywhere in Canada, in all of Canada, because we had the, the, the privilege and the tool of our publicly owned crown corporations. Uh, when David was Minister of Labor, we introduced the Family Day holiday, uh, giving Saskatchewan workers and Saskatchewan families the greatest number of statutory holidays anywhere in Canada at that, at that time. But you know when I'm asked, and sometimes I'm asked still, what I would say um, I take the most pride in in the seven years that uh, I was Premier and we were in government, my answer is always this. I am proud of what we were able to do for the kids, for our children. In the last four years of our government, the last four years of our government, we were able to increase the child care spaces in Saskatchewan by 36% in the last four years. We created 151 pre-kindergarten programs. We provided a 21% wage increase for our child care workers. We instituted the Literacy Commission, the first of its kind in Canada. We built community-based literacy programs right across the province. We offered summer employment programs for our young people. We froze tuition at our universities. We increased funding to our universities by 33% in those years. 33% increase to SIAS or Polytechnic and a 50% um, increase to our regional colleges. But the one thing, the one single thing that I believe will have the longest lasting impact on our province and our people is the development of the community school network. You know, the first community schools were established by the Blakeney government way back in the, way back in the 70s. Uh, there were 11 of them. We engaged in a major, major expansion of the community-based schools. And so today in Saskatchewan, there are 130. 
And then we instituted what we called School Plus, endeavoring to have some of the principles of the community, uh, community schools in every one of our uh, public and high schools. The community school program and the expansion of that program, I believe, is the one measure from our years in government that will have the longest lasting and most profound effect. And so I, uh, I would argue that we made economic progress, but that economic progress was joined by some real, real social progress. Well, let me just end up by, by saying that, um, look, it, it wasn't, wasn't always hard work, you know. Um, in the year 2000, we, uh, we hosted the biggest party this province has ever seen in the uh, celebration of our centennial, with, by the way, the largest, and concluded those centennial celebrations on the actual day with the largest uh, fireworks display in the history of the province, simultaneous fireworks displays in 14 separate communities. We created the largest traffic jam, a province-wide traffic jam in Saskatchewan. And, and by, by the way, everybody was so happy, nobody got mad and nobody got punched. It wasn't like Big Valley. Um, we hosted our Saskatchewan artists in a gala for Her Majesty the Queen and the Duke of, of Edinburgh. In those days, we hosted the, um, the Hardy Bowl, the Vanier Cup. We hosted the Briar, the Canadian figure skating competitions, and, and the Grey Cup. And then what no other province has ever done in um, 2000, 2006 and 7, we hosted every major entertainment, uh, every major entertainment awards in Canada. We host the Western Canadian country music. We hosted the Canadian country music. We hosted the Aboriginal country, or the Aboriginal music awards, and we hosted the, the Junos in Saskatoon. And then, and then friends, on a spring night, uh, just about this time of year, exactly, uh, in 2006, I sat on what they call the producer's stage in the middle of uh, Taylor Field in Regina. Uh, my wife, Betty, was, was on my left, and on my right was Charlize Theron, the uh, um, Academy Award-winning actress who was in the province uh, filming a movie. Uh, there were 40,000 happy constituents in Taylor Field, and in front of us was Charlie Watt, Ronnie Wood, Keith Richards, and Mick Jagger, the Rolling Stones. Someday I'd like to tell you the story about how that, how that all came to be. But let me just say this. In the middle of that show that night, it was a beautiful spring night, the moon was rising over Taylor Field. I, I said to Betty, look at, uh, this is as good as it's ever gonna get. From, uh, from now on, it's, it's all downhill. And you know what, I was right. About eight months later, the, with the consent of the majority of Saskatchewan people, I became the leader of the opposition. But I became the leader of the opposition and we left government. I think with much satisfaction in having turned the fiscal picture of Saskatchewan around, restoring fiscal sustainability and creating lasting social programs and lasting benefits and social progress uh, with the people of Saskatchewan. I'm proud of what we were able to do in over 17 years in government. Um, and of course, uh, in a few months, we're going to elect a new leader for the new Democratic Party in Saskatchewan, and we will elect the new leader of the opposition. And then it will be our task, it will be our task to elect that leader to the office of Premier of Saskatchewan. So again, economic progress can result in social progress. Uh, for the people of our province.